Hey everybody, it's Paul, back with Epic TCG. I know it's been a couple days since we've opened up a box of Ultimate Masters, so we are back. This is box number four of our restock. Um, I've already taken the plastic off because I wanted to get a thumbnail with uh, the two Karns and the box topper. Um, haven't looked at any of this stuff. We are just going to dive right in. I have another comment that I want to discuss here in just a minute. Um, actually, I'll just go ahead and I'll just bring that up right now, and I'll try not to get too distracted um, while I open these and show you these. So this comment came from Bumpasaurus420, cool username. Um, and this comment was on, oh boy, not a good start as far as the rares. Uh, this comment was on our video, Mythics in the Morning. Um, so he and I kind of went back and forth uh, a bunch and you could you can go to that video, read those comments. Uh, Bumpasaurus offers a lot of great insight. He was kind of asking like, since he knew that I opened up 12 boxes, he opened up 10 himself. Actually, I keep saying he, I don't know if it's a he or a, or a girl. Um, so Bumpasaurus opened up 10 boxes. We, we were just kind of going back and forth in the comments, sharing a little bit of information about what we both got. You know, for people who, who, who kind of obsess about the numbers, you know, we, we try and get some information <laughs> that way and try and figure out like, okay, well, what, um, you know, is there any information to glean from that? Okay, we are off to a wonderful start. Tossigar, the Golden Fang, that is our rare foil right there. Now, the last few boxes we've opened, we've had multiple rare foils. So maybe, maybe we'll, uh, you know, get lucky there. Hey, Eternal Witness. So Bumpasaurus, uh, in addition to kind of us just sharing some information about, you know, the breakdown of some of the rares and mythics and, you know, things like that that we got. Um, he asked a great question, which I didn't print it out, uh, but it was along the lines of something that he noticed that we've seen here on this channel is you don't get more than one regular. Uh, okay, our first mythic. Let's uh, let's, uh, let's just put Leovold down for a second here, sort these out. We'll set Leovold up right there. I like him. So you don't get more than one non-foil of a rare or a mythic in a box. Um, and you scarcely get more than one of the uncommons. But for the purposes of our discussion, we're going to keep it to mythics and rares. So, uh, for instance, we open up a Leovold. We open up a Disrupting Shoal and Desolate Lighthouse. I don't expect to get any more of these in non-foil version in this box. Now, remember, this was a sealed box. I opened it up. So these 24 packs are the are the 24 that came in this box. So that's kind of that's kind of the basis for Bumpasaurus's question. Um, he opened up sealed boxes as well, noticing that you don't get more, you don't get duplicate rares or mythics in a box. His question was along these lines: Could somebody buy a sealed box, open up packs, and let's say they got lucky, let's say that they pulled a Liliana, a Snapcaster Mage, which, by the way, those two mythics have come in a lot of boxes together. I don't think I got a box with a, with a Snappy and a Liliana, but I've seen Rudy open two or three that have had that. Um, and I, I do, I have tend to see some patterns with those. So anyway, um, so let's say that you get those two mythics and then maybe a Leovold is your third, just as an example. Um, or maybe you don't even get the third mythic. So, but you pulled, you pulled Lily, you pulled Snapcaster, you've pulled a Noble Hierarch, you pulled uh, Ancient Tomb, you've gotten an Urborg, you've gotten a couple other of the $10 rares. Um, Bumpasaurus's main question is, would it be worth it for the person who bought the box to stop opening packs and maybe just sell off the packs or trade the packs off as sealed packs? It's a great point, and it brings up a very interesting concept, which I'm going to get to in just a minute. To answer your question, Bumpasaurus, nothing would stop a person from doing that. Absolutely nothing. Um, you know, that's why I am terribly suspicious of buying anything like online, like on eBay or whatever, because there are stores that have done mass box openings. There are people like me who have done what many people would consider to be mass box openings. You know, th that's an advantage that they're going to have. They, they could do that. Um, uh, so yeah, for me, because I have the because I have the resources, I can buy a full box. Oh yes, demonic tutor. All right, turning it around here, right there. Because I have the resources and I can buy a full box uh, that's sealed. That's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to pay a premium to do that. Um, sometimes you can sometimes you can you know do really well just to buy you know some some open packs. Um, but because because I can, I'm just going to buy sealed boxes because I don't want to. I don't want to worry about stuff like that. I mean, I almost worry about about buying like the draft packs 
uh, from Target or something because, you know, you get three different packs, but I'm like, oh man, another Mythic and it's a Mana Vault. Great Mythic. Um, I worry about buying the draft packs because I'm like, oh man, what if, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, I could get lucky and I could get awesome cards in here. And, and we did, we got very lucky with the draft packs that we opened. Um, but I worry about, well, maybe, maybe I'm going to kind of hit all around the good stuff. Maybe the packs that I'm going to be opening are going to have like Disrupting Shoal and Desolate Lighthouse and, you know, something else in it. I'm not going to get the Mythics. Engineered Explosives. Okay, this box is going great. We're getting the great rares, the $20 plus rares. We'll just uh, hopefully just kind of keep that right up. So anyway, great question, Bumpasaurus420. Uh, great concept. And that, that is something that you guys just do need to be aware of. Um, obviously, you always make your own decisions and stuff. But information is power. Knowledge, knowledge is the most expensive thing out there because it costs so darn much to acquire. Um, so anytime that we can talk about concepts like that, I want to take that opportunity because those are things that you need to think about. If somebody comes up to you and is like, Psst, hey, buddy, I got some packs of, uh, of Ultimate Masters. You know, you got to be wondering, hey, did, did they already get all the good stuff? You know, do you have, do you have the, you know, the, the opportunity to get a Liliana out of that pack? Um, obviously, non-foil version. You know, do you, or are you, are you much more likely to get a Nourishing Troll? Um, now, if what the card you really, really want is a Nourishing Troll, and you really, really want to open it up and get it out of a pack instead of just buying it, well then, hey, uh, all things being equal, that just is what it is. All right, Squee, Goblin to Bob. So anyway, great, uh, great question, great concept. Um, that kind of also brings us to the idea of the potentiality of sealed product and packs and how much things cost. So Open Boosters over on his channel. Um, I don't particu particularly like his videos. I think things just take way too long over there. Um, which is funny coming from me, a guy who can't tell a short story and he gets distracted really easily. But I feel like his, his openings are just too slow. Celestial Colonnade. Um, I know that sounds really negative, and I'm sorry. I, I hate to be that way. Um, but, you know, it, it just is what it is. But the dude is opening up stuff that you can't see open anywhere else. You know, I mean, I get it. If, you know, if I had an alpha or a beta booster or sealed, you know, starter or something, I mean, I probably don't want to just rush through it in like a minute. Um, you know, you got to get, you got to get your watch time up and stuff for YouTube. I get all that. I understand it. But he just started opening up a sealed box of unlimited. Um, you know, that's crazy. Cause I think, I think, I think the first video was like, it's a $50,000 box. Um, I mean, number one, th that's, that's an amazing price tag to me for, for sealed product. I'm actually surprised that it's that l low on money. And a lot of people, you know, if you're a nerd like me, immediately you go and you start thinking about, okay, what's the potential pulls out of a sealed box? I mean, you're not going to get a full set of Power 9 out of a box. You're just not. Uh, you're probably, on average, going to get two. Two out of the nine Power 9. You might get lucky and get three. Um, but you're definitely, you know, or not definitely, you're probably going to get two. Um, you're also going to get some other rares that have never been uh, reprinted. Uh, you know, maybe like a Word of Command, a Cyclopean Tomb, something like that. Um, and all these things, you know, unless there's some kind of crazy thing going on, reanimate, good rare, uh, they're all going to be gem mint. So there's definitely a premium there. But remember, once you've opened them out of the package, that, that product is no longer in the marketplace. Now, talking about the potentiality. Imagine these were unlimited packs. You know, assuming that I just opened up this booster box, this could potentially include a Black Lotus. It could have a Black Lotus and a sinkhole. It could have a Black Lotus, a sinkhole, and a lightning bolt. Odds are it doesn't. Odds are it doesn't have any of those three cards. But it could have all three. And each and every pack out of that sealed box, as long as somebody knew that it was sealed and you haven't searched the packs or anything, Every single person who's buying a pack is going to pay a premium because there's the potential of pulling those really high value cards. Now I'm just fooling around about the sinkhole and the lightning bolt. Um, but every single per the, the price that, it, that this may include a Black Lotus is going to be included in the price of that pack. The fact that this particular pack may include a Liliana is going to be priced into the, pack, into the cost of acquiring and opening this pack. The fact that it probably doesn't you know, that's, that's just part of it. But the fact that it could, you're paying for that potentiality of the packs. And each and every person, you know, pays for it. Um, 
which is why like a sealed box of Unlimited or Arabian Nights or something is just crazy expensive because, you know, the potential is there to get all of those really, really rare expensive cards in gem mint condition that you just don't find out in the, in the general marketplace. And the thing is, I mean, a lot of people, you know, if you really wanted an unlimited black Lotus and you, you know, you wanted it in, in, in really good condition, maybe not gem mint, but like a, a PSA nine or a PSA 8.5, you could go ahead and you could buy one of those for far less than you could buy a sealed box for, and you're guaranteed to get a Lotus. You could then spend a couple thousand more and get one of the moxes and, you know, a couple thousand more and maybe pick up a time twister. And now all of a sudden you've got three of the power nine, um, you know, and you haven't spent the price on, on, on the box. But the thing is, if you bought the box and you could set up at one of the Grand Prix or like one of like the really high roller kind of events where you know a lot of people are going to be there that have deep pockets and are willing to take the chance. And you can sell all the packs. You could sell all those packs at a premium because people know that they haven't been searched. They're, they have an honest chance to get a Mox or a Lotus or something like that. It's going to be in Gem Mint. Um, and they're willing to pay for that. So that's kind of... That's kind of the deal with the premium on sealed product versus open. And that kind of addresses what another viewer uh, had commented on a little while ago about, you know, the gambling aspect of opening packs. Um, you know, really you are. You're, once you crack this, you're cashing in the potential for the actual. Oftentimes the actual falls far short of what the potential could have been. Every now and then you buck the trends and that's why people keep opening packs up. Plus there is just something fun about opening packs. All right, once again, uh, we have gotten our regular foil of or our regular our regular what we had in foil hey you know what we got an engineered explosives and a demonic tutor in this box maybe we'll get a foil of it maybe that would be hey a faithless looting foil that is awesome number one selling card out of this set still which is just crazy has been for weeks Gorio's vengeance i mean it's a great card don't get me wrong it's just funny that it is that it has been like the top selling card out of this set for so long. I don't, I don't know if anything else is close to it. Um, like I wonder if foil is maybe getting close to it. Or, um, oh, Bitter Blossom. Another awesome mythic. All right, so we fell just a little bit short. We've been talking about our, our price expectancy on the mythic spots. Uh, we fell just a little bit short today. Um, Bitter Blossom is creeping up in price, it's getting to be eh, like 32, 33, closing in on 35 sometimes. Um, so what do we get? 35, 30, that's 65 plus call it $10 for Leovold. That gets us 75. We needed to get about 80, uh, 80, 81, 83 dollars in our mythic spot. And we uh, obviously we missed out on that, but we're doing well on the rares and we still have our box topper to go. Let's see, Basking Root Walla sees the day. Seize your 50 cents if you have that card and you decide to sell it right now. So the prices of rares actually are coming down right now. Um, you know, they, 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 I felt like they had stabilized and then they were going up. Um, now they started coming back down with the news of this restock. I've gotten several comments about that. People talking about, you know, the restock really isn't going to be very meaningful. Um, you know, we're definitely going to see the Forex Sand Tower. Good rare. You know, I, I tend to ag agree that I don't think, I mean, Wizards could, could fool us and they could print a ton, but I actually don't feel like any meaningful amount is going to come into the marketplace with the restock. Um, I think basically what's out there is what we've got, four Mythics. Oh no, that's a regular rare. He's just a legendary guy. <laughs> All right, Kadek Teague. Um, that's actually a local favorite around me at some of the game stores. But yeah, I think that uh, I think that Wizard, Wizards is going to you know they're gonna they're gonna release just a little bit more. Um, I think most of the, most of that's gonna get hung up at the distributor level. To be honest, um, I don't own a retail store. Uh, you know, I have no way to get things at the at the distributor level. But people who do own stores are saying that you know nothing's being made available to them really. Um, you know, they might be lucky to get a case, which is four boxes, and then. You know, they're going to have to kind of kind of just be out of the product or, or, or do the TCG thing or eBay thing and, and, 
and kind of restock from there if they want to do drafts or if they just want to have packs for their customers. All right, Appetite for Brains is our final foil. So our one and only foil for the video was Tassigar. Spoils of the Vault is our final rare. All right, we started the video and ended the video with about a 30 cent rare. Actually, uh, Lighthouse is far less than that, but it is what it is. It just is what it is. All right, that leaves us with our box topper. Now we got Karn. The last time I opened a box, we got Karn, which was amazingly exciting for me. I way overestimated his value when I said 200. He is closer to the 150 mark, but I do think 200 is a much better price for him, especially since I got him. And I am not liking the way that that's opening up. I feel like I have the potential to bend that card right up, so we're gonna do it this way. So if you've got a Karn right now, and if you, uh, you know, if you don't need it, if you don't want to keep it, I, 150 just seems low to me. Maybe now because I have one, I feel like it's low. I don't know. Maybe it's just a psychological thing. Come on, Liliana, or come on, Demonic Tutor. Bitter Blossom, whoa! Oh, that looks amazing. Okay. There's the standard, there's the regular. It's funny, Bumpasaurus, you're just getting all kinds of love in this video, buddy. Um, in that same post was commenting about box top, or no, in a different post was commenting about box toppers. And they were saying that artwork that goes to the edges of the frame, see how it goes to the edges of the frame, actually makes much better looking box toppers as opposed to stuff that's like really dark against the frame, like Tossigar. Um, Tossigar was like all black near the edge of the frame. So it like, it, you know, when they zoom in, okay, it's just, it's just more, more dark. But man, that artwork is beautiful. So Bitter Blossom was a great box topper to get. That is sitting at a little bit below 100 bucks, but with as popular as the regular card has been, I see this one definitely creeping up. Um, and that artwork is just fantastic. I actually mentioned that before with Bitter Blossom. That is amazing looking. All right, I think we did, I think we did well with this box. Um, we have not been getting very many Noble High Arcs lately. We got one in a box out of these first four. So falling way short um, of the expected average, that'll probably even out as we open up more boxes. So let's just take a quick look here at what we have. So those are our good rares. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pull our good rares out and we'll look at those real quick. That makes it a whole lot easier, mm, kind of. And then we kind of have our bulk over here. All right, so. So out of 24 packs, two, four, six, eight, ten. So we only had 10 like mythics, what I would call the bulk. And uh, there's the bulk. Everything else was at least a couple dollars. So that, that definitely is better than some boxes we have gotten. So we're at about 30 bucks there. Uh, $25 for the tutor makes 55, 20 for Celestial Colony makes 75, $10 for Animate makes 85, call it five bucks for the Coronet that makes 90, 95, 105, 110, 120, about 130 in the rare spot. Um, already talked about, we got $75 worth of uh, Mythics. So we're sitting at 135 plus 75 is 210. $100 for Bitter Blossom makes 310. Uh, foils really didn't get anything terribly exciting except for the Faithless Looting. And then, we, of course, we have all the uncommons and the commons to deal with. So, overall, even though Bitter Blossom was an awesome box topper at the current price of these boxes, uh, basically it was a break even. But in order to break even, remember, guys, you gotta pay fees, you gotta pay shipping. Um, to do online stuff, and you're gonna have to make something out of these rares and commons, and that is just a whole lot of work. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I uh, wanna thank you for tuning in and leaving comments. I will see you guys next time.